Welcome to Prophecy USA, a Bible study podcast specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. My name is Rick Pearson. This is my wife, Karen. Welcome. And we have been doing this podcast. This is number 43. 43 hours that we've been doing this podcast. And this podcast uh, is specifically designed to put us on the prophetic time clock. Where are we on God's prophetic time clock? It's a question that everyone's answering, especially with what's happening in the world. It just seems like everything's getting unraveled, especially in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, uh, before we start, for those of you that are new, we do have a Bible study guide. This has all 53 descriptions of America in the Bible. And if you want, we now have a DVD package with it. If you want DVD, you can order it, and it has all 12 TV programs that takes you through all 53 descriptions of the Bible. Mm -hmm. We also have, just so you know, a free app. This app has all 23 TV programs. It has uh, many documentaries in it from each program. Mm -hmm. And we have all 43 Bible study podcasts, plus we have the ESV Bible. And it's updated regularly. It's as updated. Things progress. Every, every time we do a show or do a, a podcast, mm -hmm. we update it and you can get it. So if you, if you can't join us on Thursday night, then you can get it two or three days later. But this is a great little tool and the best part about it, it's absolutely free. <laughs> Compliments of Prophecy USA. <laughs> we love spreading the Word of God. And we were going to charge subscriptions, and we decided, no, we, you, can, you can take this. If you like what you're being taught, and you want to share it with others, press the button and send it to somebody and say, listen to, listen to TV, podcast, TV broadcast number 21 or number 14. Tell me what you think. And it's a way of getting into people's minds and spreading the word uh, to others without necessarily trying to explain it yourself. Because it, it, there's a lot of detail in prophecy. There is. And we spend literally hundreds of hours studying this because we want to make sure we're accurate in the word. But this is designed for you personally, study to show thyself approved, and it's also designed to share the word with others. Exactly. And also exciting to announce is your book. And we, we have a new book coming out. <laughs> I've been a busy boy this year with COVID. Um, we've been locked in this room, I have, for eight months. We've done 23 TV shows. We've done 43 hours of Bible podcast. We wrote the study guide. We did the DVD, and we're almost done our book on America's role in Bible prophecy. And folks, we're at critical times. Mm -hmm. We are one minute to 12 on God's prophetic time clock. There's going to be some major events take place, we believe, in our generation. Mm -hmm. We believe in our generation. So this podcast is designed... You can, you can ask us questions, type where you're from, uh, and go right on here and, and, and ask us questions, and we will answer, try to answer them. A lot of times what happens is you write questions, we cannot address them until the next week. Yeah. Um, but we have so many questions, that's why we started this podcast, um, because our teaching is not conventional. Um, this has not been taught of America's role in Bible prophecy, to my knowledge, uh, until the last 12 months or so. Mm -hmm. And we consider it a revelation of, of what's happening. And we believe that there's answers in Scripture, in the Bible, for what's happening right now in America. And uh, the prophets told us that there are eight providential nations in Scripture throughout 
all of human, humankind, there will be eight providential nations. That's in Revelation 17, 10. Six of those nations have come and gone. Leaving seven and eight. Leaving seven and eight. The eighth kingdom that comes only lasts for seven years. It's called the Great Tribulation Period. But the seventh nation is described as a woman. And this woman has 53 descriptions. The United States of America meets every description. And traditional prophecy teachers have taught something that is a 500-year-old traditional teaching on Mystery Babylon and Babylon the Great. And we believe that they're halfway wrong. Babylon is a religion but she's also a commercial place, a commercial Babylon. And commercial Babylon gets destroyed before the eighth nation comes in. Religious Babylon carries on through the tribulation period. But commercial Babylon, and, and if you get this book and you get the study guide, we will show you line upon line, precept upon precept, what God's Word says, not what we say, not what we speculate. This is what the Word says. And everyone's entitled to their interpretation of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And just because somebody interprets it different than us doesn't mean that they're 100% wrong or we're 100% wrong, but we see through a glass darkly. And uh, we believe that we're interpreting correctly and some very good things are going to come to the body of Christ in this generation, we may be the generation that does not taste of death. But we also may be the, the generation that sees the greatest one day judgment on the planet in the history of mankind. And when that judgment comes down, the bride will go up. And then for seven years, that eighth providential nation will reign, and it's going to be hell on earth when that nation reigns, mm -hmm. that kingdom. It, it, um, and most of you know what the tribulation is. Jesus said it's a time Such of, as never uh, has been. that never has been of suffering. And, and we believe that that is not designed for you and me and those who've been washed in the blood of Jesus, that there is an open door in the book of Revelation mm -hmm. where he will snatch his church and take her, take her out, the bride. And uh, we're going to talk about all that. Now, our, our message tonight is when the light goes out in America. When the light goes out in America. And uh, we're going we're gonna to hit on some questions first, but the last half of the show will focus right on that particular topic. Right. Now, you've got... I've got a comment here from Cheryl. Okay. Uh, she wanted to say hello from Erie, Michigan. I Michigan. love your Bible study podcasts, and I watch them several times over. In oh. fact, I learn more the second time I watch them than the first. Okay, Cheryl, um, when, we, when I was in university... I was taught in psychology class that uh, most people have to hear something seven times over before it gets inside of them. Mm -hmm. In other words, you hear it once, you don't have it. You hear it twice, you start, you hear it three times, you start understanding. And after you've gone over it and over it and over it, then all of a sudden it's in you. Yes. And the best way to know something is to be able to teach it. Because once you can explain it, you got it. That's true. But uh, hearing and listening and going over and meditating on the Word, that's something that the Word even says to do. In, in Psalms chapter 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law doth he meditate both day and night. And meditate means to mull over and think about. The Word of God just going in your mind all the time. Mm -hmm. You can be doing a lot of things cooking. You can be thinking about the Word of God. So listening, reading, studying, 
that's something that uh, that God has said, and He said, "He that He that does that, the person that does that, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper." So, reading the Word of God and eating the meat that the world knows not of, like Jesus said, that's a good thing, Cheryl. Really so is. study to show thyself approved, a mm -hmm. workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Right. Now we've got another question, question from Diane. She says, many people are concerned about the radical changes that seem to be coming to America. For example, socialism versus capitalism, conservatism versus woke thinking, and the open hostility toward conservative values. Is there anything in your teaching that can give us direction or insight as to how we should be trying to understand what is happening? Yes, uh, we, we all know that there's a kingdom of light and there's a kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. um, those are two spiritual kingdoms and it's all over the world like that. In America, those kingdoms are here. There's a kingdom of light and a kingdom of darkness. In Colossians 2, uh, 8 through 19, it says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in Christ dwelleth the fullness of the, of the Godhead bodily. That word philosophy in this scripture is a word used negatively in the Bible to refer to human understanding in contrast with divine revealed knowledge. Wow. It's worldly knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that word deceit, it says um, through philosophy and vain deceit, that word deceit is apate, and it means misleading speech generated in the human heart. And that, that misleading speech, that deceit, is found in Romans 16, 18, and Colossians 2, 8. So the rudiments, it also says, uh, beware lest any man spoil you with philosophy, with vain deceit after the tradition of man and after the rudiments of the world. And that word rudiments means the elements of the word, world or carnal thinking. And that's any kind of thinking that exalts itself above God. Mm. So today in America, we have people that say that they believe in faith or they believe in science over mythology. Right. They look at the Bible as mythology. Mm -hmm. uh, they look at science as fact and truth. Uh, and they don't believe in the Bible. And you have to remember something. Was it Cheryl? Uh, Cheryl that asked that or Diane? Say, that was Cheryl. Cheryl. Mm -hmm. You have to remember something, Cheryl. You know how they think, but they don't understand how we think. I'm sorry, that was Diane. It was Diane. Mm -hmm. They don't think like we do. They don't think of an afterlife. They don't think of heaven. They don't think of Jesus and the Ten Commandments. They don't think of the moral protocol of what adultery or fornication or foul language is. That's not anywhere in their vocabulary. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, it says... Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And that word inherit means to transfer a person's substance to another one. So as you read the Word of God, God is putting substance inside of you. Jesus said it was the meat that the world knows not of, and it affects your thinking. Now, it also says in that verse, but some were such of you, but you're washed, you're sanctified, you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. So we who have accepted Christ once walked in that darkness and we didn't know. My father used to say a lot of times to me when somebody would lie or cheat, he says, Rick, he doesn't know any better. Mm -hmm. 
He doesn't know any better. He thinks that's how you do business. That's not how you do business. You be honest. You be upright. Well, what were those standards? Those were the standards from the kingdom of God. Exactly. That you don't lie, you don't cheat, but they don't know that. Mm -hmm. All they know is win at any cost. So the, the kingdom inside of you should be able to discern the darkness inside of them, but they don't understand the light that's inside of you. They don't understand how we think. Mm -hmm. And um, she made the statement here, uh, is there anything in your teaching that can give us direction or insight as to how we should be trying to understand? You have to understand that they don't think like we do. And if you have Christ in you, you also have compassion in you, so you understand. Right. They don't know any better. Mm -hmm. Luke 17, 21 says, And when Jesus was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's within you. And this is how we think. Uh, in Jeremiah 17, 7, it says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be a tr as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green and shall not, and you shall not be careful in the year of drought. Now, it says, her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful. That means you don't have to be anxious. The word careful means anxious or afraid. Don't be afraid of the year of drought. And that word drought also means darkness. Mm -hmm. That means don't be afraid when certain news networks are talking about something and you know it's an outright lie what they're saying you know what's working through them. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid or anxious about it. They don't know any better. And this is all part of America's role in Bible prophecy, which we will touch a little bit later on. All of these things have to take place in order to fulfill this word. Right. He has spoken it. He will also do it. He has purposed it. He will bring it to pass because God loves everybody, but not everybody loves God. And this is the difference between the wheat and the chaff. There's some people that get convicted of lying or, or cheating and they just blow that off and they continue on into the darkness and sooner or later they get a seared conscience. They don't think of heaven. They don't think of hell. They don't think of right or wrong. All they think of is I'm going to win at any cost. So they don't understand how we think. That's true. So I hope this helps you, you understand. Um, in verse 9 of Jeremiah 17, 7, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Without God, your heart is deceitful. And the Lord searches the heart and tries the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And as the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at the end shall be a fool. God sees everything. God sees everything. Those who get riches by lying, by stealing, climbing the corporate ladder, and it's the same as in politics. He who lies and cheats and deceives the people, God sees everything. We don't have to be anxious. We don't have to be afraid. We just have to make sure that we don't let that darkness get inside of us. Now, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 4, And my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, 
the darkness has a lot of enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the Spirit and, of, and in power, this is in 1 Corinthians 2, 4, that your face should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. So our faith is not in the political system. Our faith is not in man. Our faith is not in politicians. Our faith is not in money, rudiments, the elements. Our faith is in a higher power. And I think I shared this um, weeks ago, but when my best friend died three days before um, Tony uh, was dying of cancer and Tony and I were, were in partners with an airplane and uh, it's a call to Malibu. And Tony was dying and I held his hand and we prayed and I says, Tony, when you get up there to heaven, you make sure you get that hanger good and clean because when I come, I'm bringing the Malibu. Now, Tony and I laughed. We were laughing. And isn't it amazing? Your best friend is dying and he knows he's going and you're sitting there and you're laughing at death. Where is thy victory? Grave, oh, where is thy sting? sting? This is the revelation knowledge that puts you above. I'm going to see my friend again. Right. This is the hope we have in Christ. But you know, these other folks, they don't think like that. Mm -hmm. They don't even, they don't, might not even believe in an afterlife. This is not the end of the road. This is just our testing ground. And what you do here builds up riches on the other side. So as we do this, this TV show, as I said to you, Karen, we're transferring our finances to our eternal, in the States, it's an IRA account. In Canada, it's an RSP <laughs> account. But I'm storing up riches on the other side. Maybe I'll have a bigger hanger than Tony. I don't know <laughs> if they have airplanes in heaven or not. I don't know. But, but this is how we think. We don't think like the rest of the people. Yes. And so we can understand them, but they don't understand us. No. They just don't understand. So, uh, and Paul said that we that, that it's it that we we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, and it's hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, unto our glory, which none of the princes of the world known, because it had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And, and Paul says, as, is it, as it is written, but God revealed them unto us by his spirit, for his spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. And God searches our hearts. And we're supposed to have this vertical relationship with God so that we're clean and pure before him. And we need to be that way because of what's coming. We need to be ready. We need to be ready. Now, um, it also says, let no man beguile you or trick you or deceive you of your reward in humility and worshiping of angels, intruding unto those things which he hath nor seen vainly by his fleshly mind. The word beguile here means to charm or enchant someone or trick somebody. Mm -hmm. So don't let any man beguile you. As you listen to the news... And you know they're lying. You sit there and go, that's a lie. Yep. Trust your discernment. Do Trust your... your discernment. I don't believe that. Investigate for yourself. Investigate for yourself. Don't believe everything on the internet that everybody tells you or is saying. Check it out. Because some people are not honest. And, of course, the rudiments are the elements of the world or the, or the carnal thinking. Um, and Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father except it be by me. And when the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Uh, you know, when we're talking about don't let men beguile you, I want, I want, to, I want to talk about um, just a second about um, what's happening now in the States. You have news networks that aren't being led by the spirit of truth. This is nothing new. In Berlin, before Hitler rose, 
he had a minister of propaganda called Goebbels. Uh, Goebbels was to give a full, ex uh, he was a propaganda minister. And his propaganda technique was totally cynical in that he said that propaganda is good, which leads to success, and that is bad, which fails to achieve, to achieve the desired result. In other words, if the propaganda is lies, as long as it achieves, a success. That's, that's all then that it's matters. successful. That's, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. um, but this is one of his quotes that was in the paper. Joseph Goebel was his name, and he was Hitler's chief propaganda specialist. Mm -hmm. He said, if you tell a big lie enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. And the lie can be maintained only for such a time as the state can shield the people from the political or military consequences of the lie. It thus, the lie thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all of its power to repress dissent or stop those that are coming against you. For the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie. Sounds familiar. And the truth, therefore, is the greatest enemy of the state. Hitler wanted power. At any cost. At any cost. And he did it through propaganda and lies to beguile men. And violence. And then he went violent and he took all the guns. And you need to realize that the spirit of Hitler, Hitler is dead, but the demons that work through Hitler that come to kill, steal, and destroy, they're alive and well on this planet. And they're working through the kingdom of darkness, through people who will lie, cheat, and steal, and do anything for power. Mm -hmm. um, Proverbs says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. And there's a lot of people right now, there was a lot of people mourning when President Trump got in, and now there's a lot of people mourning when they think President Trump is going to be out. Mm -hmm. You have to decide what kingdom is working through you what kingdom is working through the platforms that are being presented. And we can understand them, but they can't understand us. They cannot understand us. And they never will unless Christ comes inside of them. But for Christ to come inside of them, they have to be convicted and go, I lied, I cheated, mm -hmm. I deceived. Not, well, I won, didn't I? Right, it's a different attitude. It's a totally different attitude. Now, uh, I've got a Celia. comment here from Celia and then a question from Mike. So Celia says, your programs have helped me so much to understand prophecy, Rick. Thank you. You're welcome, Celia. And uh, Mike wants to know, what do you think about the spirit of Balaam operating as prophets in the church? Wow. <laughs> That's a heavy one. Uh, the spirit of Balaam. You know, we all know that there's a great falling away that's going to take place. And Mike is talking about the believers in Pergamos. There are seven churches in the last day, seven groups of believers. Mm -hmm. One of those groups is called Pergamos. And uh, these churches exist before the rapture takes place. In fact, it's, uh, Pergamos is the 34th description of Babylon the Great in this book. The 34th description is that Pergamos exists within Babylon. And in Revelations 2, 14, 15, it says, I have a few things against thee, Pergamos, because thou hast them that hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to practice sexual immorality. So Balaam was a, an Old Testament prophet. When Israel came into the promised land, 
Balak, the king of the Moabites, asked Balaam to curse the children of Israel. And God intervened and spoke through the voice of a donkey and rebuked Balaam. said, these are my people. Don't you dare curse them. Mm -hmm. And it scared Balaam. So he convinced the king, uh, Balaam, who was offering Balaam money uh, to let the people come in. And Balaam obeyed the Lord and didn't curse the, the children of Israel. And Israel eventually defeated the Moabites, but Balaam convinced them not to kill the women. Right. Marry the women. Have children with the women. And those women seduced those men, beguiled the men, and brought them into Baal worship. Baal worship is sexual immorality, ashtoreth poles, where they had orgies around the ashtoreth poles, and they had prostitutes and temple prostitutes, and they sacrificed their children to Moloch. Balaam was a false prophet who lured the people away. Trojan so horse. anyone who's telling you that it's okay to have sexual immorality outside the holy bounds between a man and a woman has on them the spirit of Balaam. If a prophet is prophesying about Jesus and coming to Jesus and that you need to be born again and you need to walk clean before God, that's not a prophet of Balaam. Even if that prophet prophesies something that doesn't come to pass, he has heard presumptuously. But if you're in a church where your pastor is prophesying and telling you that anything goes and God's grace will cover you, that is the spirit of Balaam. Because he's not pulling you out of sin. He's, he's, he's teaching this thing that anything goes, God's grace. I mean, I, there's people teaching right now that there's no hell. If there's no hell, then why did Jesus Christ say, don't fear man that can kill the body, but Fear God who can kill the body and cast your soul into eternal hell. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all going to stand before Christ and answer for every word that comes out of our mouth. Those people preaching that are going to stand before him. And I don't think it's going to be Jesus that's shaking in his boots for preaching about hell. <laughs> when you pick up this book and you start teaching out of it, you better make sure that you're lining up with scripture, because the Bible talks about hell. Paul said there was a hell. David talked about hell in the pit. That's a spirit of Balaam, a false prophet, a false teacher mm -hmm. that tells you you can live a lifestyle whatever way you want to. No, you can't. And no, also, you can't. Even Paul said, I keep my body under subjection lest I win others to Christ and lose my own soul. Mm -hmm. Paul was a very moral person. He had a high moral, uh, you know, he walked in, 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 in clean before the Lord. That's why God did so many signs and wonders through him. So people today who practice Balaam's tactics are motivated by a total lack of understanding. A sexual involvement with anyone outside the bond of holy matrimony is a defiance against God's laws. And it's putting your sensual appetite ahead of God's moral code of ethics. And the, the doctrine of Balaam is a doctrine of defiance. It mm -hmm. defies God's laws. Mm -hmm. um, now we should have... Uh, I've got a question from Tom. Tom. Oh, here we go. Yeah. He, he'd like to know what you mean by the title, quote, when the light goes out in America, okay. end quote. He, this is the main topic for tonight. Yes. Um, Tom asked that question, what does it mean when the light goes out in America? Okay, uh, now we talked about being beguiled. We talked about darkness. We talked about people who don't understand 
how we think, but we should understand how they think because we've come out of that, mm. been washed in the blood. And now as we get into this book, our minds are renewed and we keep changing right until the day we die. And we don't stop learning until the day we die mm -hmm. because the, the knowledge of God is infinite. And uh, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 14, uh, when the light goes out in America, in, in Matthew 5, 14, it says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now, Ronald Reagan, uh, built on a phrase preached by a Puritan pilgrim by the name of John Winthrop, and this came from the early 1630s uh, in a ship they, they were bound, he was a pilgrim, and they were bound for America. And using that verse, uh, John Winthrop said this, We must consider that we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us, so that if we shall deal falsely with our God in this work we have undertaken, and so cause him to withdraw his present help from us, we shall be made a story and a byword through the world. Mm. Now, the origins of that was from that verse. You are the salt, and if the salt's lost his savor, and you are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in 2 Corinthians 4.16, Paul picks up and he says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake, for God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has now shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Light is knowledge. Mm -hmm. Hosea said, my people perish for lack of knowledge, for lack of light. And then Paul said in verse 7 of 2 Corinthians 4, 16, for we have this treasure, this light, or this knowledge in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We're troubled on every side and not distressed. We're perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. The light of the knowledge is referencing the spirit of truth that's supposed to work through believers. Mm -hmm. We know stuff that the darkness doesn't know. We know things that these people that don't like us, that are making lies and saying lies about other people, we know things they don't know because there's an end to what they're doing. The Bible says they'll end up like fools. And the light of the knowledge is referencing the spirit of truth that's, that's supposed to work through believers. And it's also supposed to work through the government of the people who base their government on truth. And this goes back to the United States of America. Uh, Jesus said, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you shall know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. This is, the, this is the light of the knowledge of Christ that was in the founding fathers that said, let's go build a nation like a city on a hill that shines a light out to the nations mm -hmm. and the gospel message. So they transferred that light into the form of a national constitution for a nation whose motto is one nation under God. A nation whose money says in God we trust. Who declares in the, in the Declaration of Independence how every man answers directly to God. We're free mm -hmm. and we're subject to God. Now the first 16 descriptions of Babylon that, that we have in this book, 
is that she's providentially raised up by God. She's a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. She's the seventh of eight nations. Um, she appears before the Antichrist and the ten nations emerge, who is a kingdom of total darkness. Mm -hmm. And she's recognized by the world as a symbol of a woman. And through her covenant with God, she becomes the wealthiest of nations. She trades with the merchants in her deep water ports. Uh, she trades 27 products. She's traded in slavery and the souls of men. She makes merchants of the earth rich. That's just the first 10 right. of 53 descriptions. And uh, in, it, it, this, this is all in, in the TV programs uh, 2 and 3. No, 3 and 4, I'm sorry. And her military is the strongest in the world. This is all the results of walking in the light of God and trying to form a covenant with God and the blessings of God came upon America. Mm -hmm. And the national covenant is based on the personal covenant of the founding fathers. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean everybody's perfect. Because none of us are perfect. No, but they're trying. But they're trying, just like we're trying. We're trying to walk in that light. Mm -hmm. And God honors that. Um, but something happens to this lady of kingdoms. And that's in the 17th and 18th description. It says she falls into spiritual darkness in God's eyes. Is this happening right now? As you look at our government and what's going on and you listen to the news, I'm asking you, is this the light of the knowledge of God and truth and honesty that's being broadcast? Or is it darkness? Is it lies and corruption and things don't make sense and they're investigating some people but they won't investigate others and there, there's just a lot of darkness and in in the 18th description of Babylon, the Bible says that she's literally driven into darkness. Right. Revelation 18.2 says, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Is this happening right now in America? Ask yourself that question because this is serious stuff. If we're the seventh of eight nations, we have to meet these criteria. Isaiah 47 says, Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms. This great nation that was built on the establishment of covenant with God and is supposed to be the light of the world falls into darkness and God says, you're no longer the lady of kingdoms. You're not my lady of kingdoms because you're operating in darkness. You're lying, you're cheating, you're corrupt. But the people inside her don't have to be that way, but the leadership goes that way. Right. It goes terribly corrupt. Now here's the question of what's happening when the light comes out of America. In verse 5 of Isaiah 47 it says, Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Verse 6 says, I was angry with my people and given them into thy hands, O Babylon. And Babylon did show them no mercy. Upon the ancient one have you heavily laid your yoke, O Babylon. And thou saidst, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. Is this mean that persecution is going to come to those who carry the light, and those who are in the darkness, we are handed over, and we're going to have some persecution. We have verbal persecution now. Mm -hmm. But is it going to get worse than that? Now, in this study guide, we consider that verse and we apply it to 60 million innocent children 
who God says, I gave my people into thy hand and I showed them no mercy. You cut them up, you, you, you killed them, you murdered them even in the womb, and their blood cries out. But what about us that are alive and we have the light of God in us? Are we going to see persecution in America? Remember, we now are the light within the city. That has fallen into darkness. Has the city fallen into darkness? Are we corrupt like the other nations that we say we are the light of the world? Or are we just like them? So this is the big question. Now, many people and many prophets are saying that before the rapture takes place, that God's going to do mighty signs and wonders and there'll be a great outpouring of God's Spirit. And many people are prophesying that uh, before the coming of the Lord, the spirit of Elijah will come. Now, Elijah was a whirlwind prophet, called down fire from heaven, killed with his own hands and a sword, cut off the heads of 450 prophets of Baal. <laughs> Baal worship is alive and well in North America. The same spirits that work through Jezebel and the Baal worshipers are here right now. They don't know what's working through them, but we do. And now here's a big question. The spirit of Elijah only shows up when Jezebel's in control. Jezebel was a woman who was married to the king, but then she took over and she ruled over him. And he was just a puppet to her. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in the next six months or three or four years in America, we're going to have to watch and discern. But if that darkness and we're handed over, there may be some persecution. Now, Here's the good news. In Acts 14, it talks about the disciples and it says, And it came to pass in Iconium that the disciples went both together into the synagogues of the Jews and they spake. They were giving the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. They were preaching the gospel. And great multitudes of the Jews and also the Greeks believed. So they were having revival. Right. There was a revival going on. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. Those who were walking in darkness did not like these people who were winning other people out of the kingdom of darkness. And those spirits didn't like that because mm -hmm. they wanted control of the people. And the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren, against the apostles. Mm -hmm. And long time therefore abode, they speaking boldly in the Lord, the apostles were speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and God granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. So while there was a persecution, God says, I'm going to intervene here. I'm going to help my people spread the light and I'm going to move my hand and do signs and wonders. But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. There was a division in the nation. A division between light and darkness. And God was right in the middle of it. And the light was shining bright out of those disciples. But guess what? Eleven out of the twelve disciples were brutally murdered. They were crucified upside down. They were stoned to death. Uh, they were flogged to death. They were thrown off of buildings. Cut in half. Paul was beat up and put in prison, and while he was in prison, he, he, was it Peter that was with Paul when that happened? 
you don't remember. You need to read your Bible, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I forget who it was. But anyway, Peter, Paul was in prison with another disciple and they were praising God because they, they couldn't believe that they were worthy to be beaten mm. for the gospel's sake. And God was so pleased that he caused an earthquake and the chains fell off of them and they walked out. And the guard was so afraid because... Uh, Paul had walked out, he went to him and Paul led him to the Lord. Now folks, if you're getting all uptight because somebody makes fun of your faith, wait till they start beating you and flogging you and oh, throw you in jail prison. and you still love them. That's a tall order. Yes. But that's what pulled the signs and wonders that we see in the Bible. That's the love of God that worked through the disciples. And that's a tall order. And it says, and when there was an assault, as I'm still reading from Acts 14, and when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, this is the rulers of the nation said, go after them. <laughs> Folks, we may be entering into a whole new paradigm in North America. Mm. And you folks that want to see signs and wonders, I hope we see signs and wonders, but we may pay a price to have signs and wonders. And it happened before, and maybe it'll happen again. I'm praying that it does not. But they, the ruler said, go after them, use them despitefully, and stone them. And they were aware of it, and they fled unto Lystra, and to Derb, cities of Lyconia, and unto the regions that lieth round about. And they preached the gospel everywhere. Guess what, America? This nation was raised up so people that were persecuted could come here. And this is where we found in North America, the pilgrims found this government, this nation was a place where we were free to preach the gospel, uh, to live the way we wanted. Right. But what happens when the light goes out in America? What happens if the darkness takes over and starts persecuting those who carry the light? Isaiah 47 says, I gave them into thine hand, O Babylon, and you showed them no mercy. Now remember, what you do to a Jew, God will do to you. When, when uh, Pharaoh drowned the, the firstborn in Egypt, God killed the firstborn of all the Egyptians. And then he drowned the whole Egyptian army. Mm -hmm. When Naaman built the gallows for Mordecai, his whole family hung on the gallows that he built. That's right. And when Hitler uh, shot, gassed, and burned the Jews, at the end of the, of the at the end of the time, when Hitler realized he was a fool, shot himself. He, he, he bit down on a gas Sunday tablet, night. shot himself in the head, and had his guard, guard, guard burn his body. What you do to a Jew, God will do to you. And we are Jews. We are circum we, we are, our hearts are grafted into the Jewish race. So what they do to us, God will do to them. So the 54th description of Babylon, we have 53 descriptions of Babylon. And we have verbal persecution, but we do not have physical persecution but if it comes God is watching and he will execute the 54th description upon Babylon the great and that's found in Revelation 18 it says therefore shall her plagues come in one day death mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord who judges her I'm reading from Revelation 18:8. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her 
when they see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great population center, Babylon, for in one hour is thy judgment come. It also says, The merchants of these things that were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the great of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, that great city, decked with gold and precious stones, for in one hour the richest nation in the world has come to naught. And it says even the shipmasters and all the companies and the sailors and as many as trade by sea will stand afar off and cry when they see the smoke of her burning, wherein were made rich, they were made rich, and all that had ships in the sea by reason of her wealth, for in one hour is she made desolate. Now, it says, Rejoice over her, O heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you, us, on her. And thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more all, no more at all. Now listen to this, verse 22 of chapter 18. And the voice of the harpers, the musicians, and the pipers, and the trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. Those are the worship leaders in the nation. That's referring to worship leaders. In the Old Testament, they brought the harpers, the musicians, the... There'll be no more worshipers in Babylon once the judgment comes down. And, and it says, and, and verse 20, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. That is you and me. We're not going to be here once the judgment comes down. Now, in Proverbs 20, it says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, mm. the light of a candle. When I say, when the light goes out of America, I'm talking about you and me are going to go out of America. We are going to be taken out of America. And the light is the knowledge of Christ that comes from the candle. The spirit of the Lord is the candle of man. And if you don't have Christ, you have no light in you. And as early as the second century, a Christian academic wrote that the religion uses candles not just to dispel night's gloom, but also represent Christ, the uncreated and eternal life, light. The light of a candle is you and me and will be heard no more in Babylon after the judgment. But will Babylon judge us? Will we be handed into her hands and they show us no mercy? There's 60 to 80 million children in heaven that we've shown no mercy to. That blood has defiled the land and it will not be pardoned. It will not be forgiven. For he who sheds the blood of man by man shall his blood be shed. Now here's the good news. Where does the light go? when it's no more shines in, in Babylon. Revelation 19 says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah and salvation, glory and honor and power unto the Lord, for true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great Babylon, which did corrupt the earth, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Mm -hmm. And they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped, saying, Hallelujah, praise God. Let us be glad and rejoice, give honor to Jesus, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. You know where all those worshipers in Babylon are? They're all transported up into heaven mm -hmm. immediately after her judgment. And the light of a candle shall be heard no more at all in her. For seven years, the darkness will invade this earth. 
And those who don't want Christ and don't want the light of the knowledge of God will be given over to the darkness. There'll be 144,000 Jewish evangelists at that time. So there will be a preaching of the gospel. But the bride of Christ is gone out of Babylon and the light shines no more in her. And that's what the title of this broadcast was. Let me just... When the light goes out in America. When the light goes out in America. That's what I'm talking about. You can choose today. You can be in the light or you can go into the darkness. But I highly advise you to go into the light. And it's very simple. You just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me with your blood. Take me out of the darkness and let me enter into the peace that passes understanding. Mm -hmm. Folks, this is a positive word that we've given tonight, but it's a very sobering word. Yes. Nobody knows what the future holds, but we know what the word of God says. So we'll see in the weeks and the days and the years to come what happens in America. But your choice should be that you want to be part of the light and get out of the darkness. Absolutely. And that's our goal. That the light of the knowledge of God might shine through these earthen vessels of flesh and blood. So Tom, I hope I answered your question. And we are out of time. We've gone our full hour. Yes. That goes so fast. It really does, Rick. Yeah. So um, this is Prophecy USA. Karen Pearson. Thanks for coming. Don't forget to share the podcast, please. We're still being censored by Facebook. Yes. So get the message out. Please share this because Facebook has decided that they don't like the little light that's shining out of our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and we want our light to shine. And the only way we can spread it is if you will share it with others. We appreciate it. So, and we appreciate that. So uh, I'm Rick. This is Karen. It's Prophecy USA. And we're reminding you that Jesus is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people realize. We'll see you next week. Shalom. Good night. Hey friends, Prophecy USA has a great new phone app and it's absolutely free. It includes all of our TV programs. Did you know there are eight providential nations in scripture? And the seventh nation has 53 descriptions all unveiling the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. Our three to five minute quick documentaries detail multiple topics all pinpointing where America lies on God's prophetic time clock. Frequently asked questions are easily answered through live podcast Bible studies. Can you remember all 53 descriptions of America in the Bible? Well, now you'll have them in the palm of your hand. We even have the ESV Bible in the app, so you'll be carrying God's Word with you wherever you go. Prophecy USA app is now available at the App Store and Google Play. So for one of the best witnessing tools to share the signs of the times, get it today at prophecyusa.org.